Hey, it's Mark from Baker's Green Acres, uh, coming back at you. Uh, same day. I, I changed my clothes, you know. Okay, this is a, this is a bombshell. This is really a bombshell. Uh, I received this from one of our friends. This is one of our friends that has subscribed to the Michigan Pork Producers uh, newsletter, right? So this information in this article here comes directly from Michigan Pork Producers, and it's going to their, their members. And what this is about is um, how terrible feral swine is in the state of Michigan and all the damage that they can do and all the terrible, terrible things that can happen with feral swine. As you've heard, you know, they can kill baby deer and they can, uh, they can kill little baby birds and attack people and they can kill your dogs and your kittens and uh, uh, they can carry... Here, here, I'll just read from it. Uh, they, well, I'll just paraphrase it. They can carry, can carry, up to 30 diseases. And some of these diseases can communicate to human beings. They can be, uh, infect human beings. Can, can. Not have, not will, not proven to. It's can. It can happen. Just like pigs can go feral. They can. Not that they have, and not that we've seen any of them. It's just that they can, all right? And, and it's been pork producers saying that my pigs are feral, and my pigs carry up to 30 diseases. All right, can carry. Not that they have, and not that they've ever tested my pigs, or one of my pigs has ever tested for any of these horrible things, or killed any baby deer, or scared any old women. Um, they can. All right, that's that's what they're saying, and it's it's disinformation at best. It's uh, more like lies. Uh, okay. Then there's another article that I can only paraphrase because the people at this company are are pretty touchy about um, plagiarism. But it's an outfit called Mears. It's Michigan Information uh, Reporting Service. And it comes out of Lansing, and it costs like 600 bucks to be on their list of receivers of this. And usually politicians get it. All the who's who people down in Lansing get it. Uh, and that's per quarter, so it's 2400 bucks per year to get it. And they're very reputable reporting service. It's a very reputable reporting service. Anyway, they had this article out. It was forwarded to me, but I can't post it because they don't like that. And I'm going to be fair to them because they've been fair to me. But this article is about a virus. It's called Porcine Epidemic Diarrhea Virus, P-E-D-V. Right? You can't go anyplace to make a video. Right? I'm telling you. All right, P-E-D-V. Uh, P-E-D-V has been in the country now for about six months, and according to pork producers, their own numbers, they have lost, and this is in this article, but you can find it other places on the web, they've lost 8 million uh, pigs. All right. So, it's not theory uh, that PEDV could come here. We got the dead bodies to prove it. It's here. And it's very likely to devastate uh, the Michigan pork producers. Very likely to do that. All right, now, I, I can't believe that they haven't blamed it on me. But if they did that, then they'd have to get some of my pigs and test them and test positive for PEDV. And it's, it's unlikely that my, t my pigs would test positive. So here's the facts as I know it. All right, the Eurasian wild boar which is the root stock of every pig known to man, there is only one species of pig, has a natural resistance to what's called the coronavirus. And the coronavirus is an is a umbrella, and under the coronavirus is PEDV. And PEDV is a virus that occurs in, in the environment. All right? the, the problem that pork producers is, is having is that 
uh, their process is what is causing PEDV to happen. All right, here's the way it works. If you're a commercial pork producer, you have a, a hog house, you have 5,000 hogs in it. They're not on a dirt floor. They're on a floor that's slatted. That means there's holes in it. And their manure and their urine go through the floor, all right? Sprays come on periodically on automatic timers, and they help to move that manure through the floor into a big uh, foundation underneath the house where it's kept in a slurry, all right? And all the micro, microbiotic action happens under there. It produces methane. The methane comes up through the floor, has to have big vents on either side, big fans, the, the, the house does, or else the pigs um, suffocate because the methane's so bad, which happens periodically. Uh, you don't hear about it, but what usually happens is the fans go off, breakers kick, or there's a power outage, and the farmers are not around, and after a very short period of time, you have 5,000 pigs that are dead. And you know, so then they call in the crew and they start dragging them out. And then during the night, the cool air of the night, <clears throat> some of them jump back up and then they run into the corn. And that's really where any kind of pigs that are loose come from. It's not farmers like me. It's the big farmers that are, that are having the problems. Or they have trucks to tip over or things like that. It's not from pigs like mine. We, we know how many pigs we have. And, and if they get away, they, like I said, they don't, they don't take off. They come up to the house, so we know that they're out. But anyway, um, with all their manure being under the house, <clears throat> the virus is concentrated, all right? So the viral count goes up and up and up. And then they do nifty things like they aerate it, so that helps the virus survive. They're not trying to, they're just trying to keep it in a slurry. And then periodically they'll dump the tank They'll pump it into uh, a tanker, and then they take the tanker out, and what they used to do was they just have these big guns that spurt this liquid manure off the back of the truck. But it's so bad, it smells so bad that people 25 miles away, you know, cannot believe the smell. So they, they received so many comments from that that finally the Department of Ag made them what they call knife the manure into the ground. So they have these knives on the back of the, uh, the tanker, and there's an array of them, however many, it could be 50 of them, and the knives are hollow, and they press that manure down through the knife, down into the soil about this far. So uh, down about that far, it still stinks, but down about that far, it, uh, the soil temperature is about 50 degrees. And that's a perfect environment for the virus to survive, all right? And then what do they do? They grow the corn on top of it. And what do they do with the corn? They feed it to the pigs. So they have this cycle going with this virus, and the viral count is so high that when the baby pigs get it, of course, the baby pigs are on a sub-therapeutic dose of antibiotics. And they do that to uh, shut down their immune system so that the energy that the pigs are taking in will go right into the pork production, right? So their immune system is shut right down because of the antibiotics. So then the virus uh, takes the baby pigs. They have extreme diarrhea, and they just, um, they just shell right out. They, they scour to death, and it's a really bad thing. I mean, it's cruel that this is happening because it doesn't have to happen. Now, uh, out on pasture, it's less likely because when our pigs manure, uh, it's in the sun, and their manure, the, the virus is immediately uh, knocked down. So the viral count is going to be lower. Uh, also, the immune system in pigs that are on pasture, not just our pigs, but anybody's pigs that's doing on pasture, is going to, their immune system is going to be good. So there's never a need to give these pigs any kind of antibiotic. Um, and what I mean by a subtherapeutic dose of antibiotic, they're, they're hitting these baby pigs with antibiotics from the day that they're born. It's in their feed, right? And they do that all the way through adulthood. And you, you want to talk about acceptable levels of antibiotics. I don't think there really is an acceptable level if you don't need them. Now, don't get me wrong. I would, I would not 
not give my children antibiotics if they had a bad cut or something where they needed it. I would. But I'm not going to put it on their cornflakes every day just to keep them from getting sick. You know, that's what I'm talking about, subtherapeutic. Okay, um, okay, then here we are. Uh, pork producers has accused me of having pigs that can carry up to 30 diseases for three years now. And the Department of Natural Resources has done their bidding, as well as MDARD, has done their bidding, attacking us, attacking my family, my children. And now pork producers actually has a disease. They have a viral problem, which would be a disease, that has killed 10% of their herd. Now, why aren't you, Keith Cray, why aren't you telling them they have to de depopulate their animals? I'm just curious here, because that's why you were telling me I had to depopulate mine, right? Is because my pigs can carry diseases? They can attack old women and children? They can kill baby deer? Never did. My pigs have never escaped. But you attacked me anyway. $700,000 worth of fines, Bill Schuette, running for Attorney General of the great state of Michigan. $700,000 fines because my pigs could. And now let's look at pork producers. Sam the Ham Hines. Where are you, buddy? Your pigs are dropping like flies. And what are you doing about it? Are you depopulating them to keep me safe? Now in this Mears article... I'm going to tell you that there were two incidents where people from Department of Ag piped up very, very quickly. And they piped up about, oh, oh, uh, no, this isn't, uh, this isn't a threat to human health. Nope, not at all. Eight million pigs have died, but it's not a threat to human health. Hmm. But in the case of my pigs... Although there's never been a human being that's contracted any of these 30 diseases they say my pigs can carry, they're saying that my pigs are a threat to human health. Right off the bat, Mark's pigs are a threat to human health. Now, I don't eat pork out of the store. I haven't in 10 years. And uh, I know a lot of people that won't. They simply will not eat pork out of the store just because of the inhumane way that it's raised and the antibiotics and the growth stimulants and all that stuff. I don't. But I tell you what, with this PEDV, I certainly wouldn't. And I would tell all my friends that, gee, I, I don't know if I'd eat that. I, I think I'd go to something else, you know. That's just a personal feeling about it. But uh, I would even, if I did like to have eat pork from the store, I'd call them up. I'd call Walmart up, hint, hint, and I'd ask them, where do you get your pork from? You know, are you getting it locally, or is it coming out of uh, these, these big hog houses that have PEDV? I'd ask them, I'd ask them that, because I'd want to know if I had to eat that pork out of that store. I'd be, you know, if I had a loved one that was uh, in a public school, I'd be calling the public school, and I'd be saying, where do you guys get your pork? Let's say I had a loved one that was in prison. I'd be calling that prison. I'd say, I want to know where the pork comes from. You'd probably never find out. They'd probably pick you up and throw you right in there. But any place where they have to sell a lot of pork, I'd want to know. I'd be calling McDonald's and find out where they're getting their pork from. That's what I'd be doing. All right, I just think it's bitter irony that this has happened. And uh, don't take my word for it. You can call up Sam Hines and ask him. Sam Hines is the... Uh, the vice president of the Michigan Pork Producers. I don't even know who the president is. Why is the vice president always so important? But uh, I would call old Sam and ask him about this and ask him what he's doing to protect, protect all the small, the small producers of pigs in the state of Michigan. You know, pork producers are going to tell you, uh, as well as uh, poultry producers and all these guys that work for ALM, Ag Leaders of Michigan, they're going to tell you that small producers producers like me are no threat to their business. That is such baloney. All right, these are people that deal in futures markets, and they see the trajectory of the small farm right now coming back. Why? Because they're producing food that is not good for human bodies. That's why. And mothers know it. Mothers see other kids that are just 
fat like sausages and they don't know why. Kids running around, they, they're, they're so fat they can't even hardly move. Why is that happening? Is it because of computers? No, it isn't. It's the food. It's all the growth stimulants. It's the genetically modified corn that they're feeding um, these animals in feeding operations like this. Everybody knows it. It's just no one will say it because the... I don't know why they won't say it. It's probably because of the money. I know the politicians in Lansing, a lot of them will just do whatever ag leaders tell them to do. But see, that's the key that you guys have to look at. You have to be calling them and saying, we do not want you to do what ag leaders want because we demand better food. All right, I'm at 15 minutes, so I better cut her off here. This is Mark from Baker's Green Acres. Anyone can farm.